the speed of sound And when your love is swing my way My love be mine through time and speed I'm a machine devising a scheme To wipe out the scene as soon as I start writing regimes Everybody mean when they tryna make the green The game sharper than the motherfucking laser beam upon a screen Nah, nah, and that's what people seem to forget Fake don't get long term respect And I've been working hard enough to get upset But there's so much inside of me to protect Welcome back guys, we're jumping into the next episode of the 5W's interview show uh, This is not this guy's first time here This is our second time doing this interview We tried it last night, it didn't work I did not cry afterwards I got sad, but I didn't cry but we're Listen, jumping right back into it. We have a whole new set of questions for him. He's going to run the gauntlet a second time. We have a very special guest that I cannot overstate how excited I am to sit down and talk to him again. It was an absolutely amazing conversation yesterday, and I expect nothing less from what we're going to do today. So this is Cast. He's a vocalist, a poet, a producer, a musical genius, a goofball, a visionary, and the greatest thing you have never heard of. He's straight out of New York. Uh, he got on my radar by one of my buddies, Graf, who was on the interview, the first interview of the 5Ws, put me on to Cast, said, you got to check this guy out. I listened, and you should too. You have to check him out. Uh, in my opinion, he's one of the most interesting things in music I've heard in a while. He's per one of my personal, he's become one of my personal favorite creators almost instantly just because i find he's such a relatable balance of being just turn up music that you just want to listen to but also that perfect balance of also getting super intimate right when like he's got the hook of the hook of being a turn up then he's got the intimate stuff to bring it all back and he's just an absolute joy so cast how are you doing today doing good um thank you for having me things happen so uh um, I'm sure it'll be, definitely be better the second time around. <laughs> oh, we can only hope so. Okay, so we're just going to jump into our first question of the five W's, which is our who. And I just want to know, you have a complex relationship with introspection and often deal with subject matter of multiple versions of you, like in the, video, like in the music video for Oops and Fast Forward, where you play multiple characters and, if I may quote, uh, you, have a curtain, you have a personal cast of characters, you are your own worst enemy, uh, and who you are isn't your face or like what you perceive. So, uh, who are the other personifications of cast? Um, that's a good question. I, I, the, the way that I describe it, especially for like the oops video is, uh, I sort of, um, tackle all, everyone's made up of sort of many different personalities that they take on mm -hmm. because we're all very fluid and fleeting and whatnot. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm the, the, the shortest answer I can give is uh, I'm still learning about myself. I always will be. It, it's music is, is just self-discovery. Mm. And um, I, I definitely would love, I, I love hearing that people find pieces of themselves inside of the music that I put out. So um, yeah, not only am I cast, but so are you. That's really interesting. So, so it's, so everyone is kind of like a, takes a piece of what you create and it's uh, kind of like it's for them it's for like interpretation and it's like yeah yeah completely. what i put out is for it's for people to experience yeah mm -hmm. absolutely okay so we're just gonna fly into our second question here which is our what uh so this one we're gonna talk about some music for a bit because we didn't talk about music your like songs at all almost last time so we're taking it back so in ball in Sharami, in ugh you play with some of the most interesting and captivating song structure I've ever heard. Constantly switching up the sound through some through throughout the song, through new genres, new instruments, new rhythms, new rhyme patterns. I never know what to expect, but it goes farther than that when you switch with your switch ups. Also, completely change the lyrical tone of your songs. So, what really yeah. is your inspiration behind song structure? And yeah, I get. Uh... I get bored. <laughs> like a lot of the time, um, people make three, four minute songs and it just maintains like an energy all the way through and they don't meet up to a certain standard. And for me, uh, I always like surprising people. And I'm, gl I'm glad that you picked up on the structure because that is one of the most important things to me. The way that like a song moves from area to area, either sonically or lyrically. And, um, at the end, it, it always starts with words, and the words sort of carry 
where the structure to the song is going to go. So in something like Cherami, it's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, not only lyrically is it telling a story, but it also is sonically telling a story in the sense mm -hmm. of like exposition and then a crazy part and then a very uh, a, a resolution that you can mm -hmm. sort of find yourself in. And uh, with Ball, an intro that just switches into something much more emotional, that was sort of a red herring on, on my part. Um, because I really wanted people to uh, to experience that intro when I when I first performed it live, it was at an open mic, and it was uh it was through Instagram Live. Uh, shout out on mic day, but um, I I just performed that intro because I didn't want to give away the actual song, mm -hmm. and so that beginning is great for you know doing it live, and I really wanted to accentuate that in terms of just constantly moving through different pieces of the song i want you to get as many versions of me as i'm trying to um mm -hmm. trying to convey because if i remember um, correctly it's always in woo uh it is a song that takes place in multiple time periods the first verse is from the past the second is from the future and then the third is written through your present voice and it's like it once i kind of yeah, figured that yeah. out and there's like i just like it brought so many new levels to the writing and i just started to like see inferences and how things tie around so much better and it it's just really interesting to see all the levels that you craft into it thank you yeah woo is uh definitely one of the best songs i've made because it's um lyrically it, it's all very consistent in terms of starting off with motifs in hip-hop and it, it, it dives into the perspective of my past my future and then my uh my present my present state so yeah which is pretty sick. And I ended up finding the breakdown video for that. And I was like, yeah. man, uh, that was hard to find. But uh, if you ever make that public and av available for people to find again, uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. It is super interesting. Cast breaks down how he made the beat, how he writes the lyrics, how he goes through the everything. And it's just an incredible insight into why music is done a certain way and how he does it. And uh, it, it's actually absolutely incredible. Uh, you have the video unlisted now, but I found it through an old interview yeah. that you did. But absolutely incredible stuff to see the behind the scenes work of your brain. I thought that was it was, it was super entertaining to watch. You did your deep dive. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So we'll move straight on to our third question, which is our where. And then... At the end of the music videos, uh, at the end of music videos, Don't Leave Me in the Dark, Sleep, and Moon, you have epilogues that feature, to my knowledge, unreleased songs that are strikingly captivating. So my question is, where do these epilogues live in the world that is your music? Are they connected uh, to the songs they follow, or are they just ambiguous? Because they're not really, there's no other appearances outside of there. Yeah, um, I want to definitely keep it that way, because... Uh, I enjoy when, um, I enjoy when certain things exist solely for a universe that I make. So, um, the, the answer, you kind of answered your own question because mm -hmm. they're, they're only going to exist there. And, um, most of the epilogues they're, they're out. So smelly and, uh, I haven't, I haven't put out change yet, but, um, I, okay. I, I chopped up pieces of fast forward. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's all. It's all for the world that I created. Okay. Uh, it's all, everything I do is intentional. Yeah. Change yeah. stuck with me particularly. I thought, I just wasn't ready to see that after like, you, after like the music video, because it follows Moon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. One of your, yeah. your biggest song and your biggest video that was absolutely incredibly super profound video that yeah. I don't even think you're in it really at all. Yeah, no, not till the end. I, I make an appearance in the middle. Yeah. Um, and I make like, uh appearance in an easter egg in yeah, the video it's like you're not there at all and it's just like the super interesting story interesting cinematography absolutely amazing video you have to check it out uh then it ends and then you bring in change which i just wasn't expecting and like it's not something I'd, like I, I was like I've, it's not something i've really seen before come up in music for like epilogues that are like it's so different it's just you singing in like a new york subway station with like a trash can and a stick and it's yeah. all acapella. It's all just through the, like the vibrato of the hallway and of everything. And you're just sitting on the ground. And uh, I, um, personally, I think it's like one of like my favorite performances you've done because it just it just feels so 
authentic or it just it just carries so much emotion and weight to it that it that was like one of the things that really made me stick and be like okay no this this dude is like next level is like uh he doesn't need to do anything to be to do art anything he does it kind of like expresses it fully and it's it's really uh interesting so is that is that change eventually going to be something that we get to hear in in its entirety or is it uh no but <laughs> thank you okay. though i mean everything that you said about uh it existing and just being an emotion thank you thank you very much for that mm-hmm. i i think that uh it, it's really important for me um when people understand like what i'm trying to push out mm-hmm. uh and you'll definitely get more versions uh, m- more of that version of myself yeah. in the near future. But uh, as for plans to like put change on Spotify, make an official studio version or something like that. No, that, that existed for that universe. Okay. That's, uh, that, that's how it has to, that's how it ha- sort of has to be. Um, after we recorded it, I was with Steph and he had asked me, dude, you got to put this, like, you, you got to put this out. And I was like, I don't, cause it's not, it's not for that. I don't want people to, uh, consuming that medium like you need the video be, be solely because of the ending mm-hmm. because of the one second where i the character sings oh, I, I need change and uh the guy comes by and yeah gives him there's change. so much so, context to it that a song wouldn't do justice like it doesn't it's not a spotify single it's like it's like you perform yeah, exactly. it live or you make like a so, its own like video but it's, it's kind of neat that's an easter egg out there yeah uh, but uh props to you for adding all this stuff i think it's uh it's incredibly interesting and makes being a fan of your work so much more entertaining thank you very much awesome so we're just gonna fly straight into our fourth question of the five w's which is our when and uh this is a bit of a rehashed question for yesterday but i just still wanted to talk no about it because uh i love it and uh when will we find the truth about what elo is oh man <laughs> I can't give that away only because I want people to sort of lose themselves in mm-hmm. the universe that I'm making. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I can't, unfortunately, I can't answer that. No worries. Is there yeah. a plan to eventually give that answer or is it something more that's yeah. supposed to live eventually? Okay. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely plans. It, it'll, it'll make itself, I explained it in the website, it'll, it'll make itself more and more evident as time goes along, mm-hmm. um, I, I don't ever like uh, the idea of, hey, here, here's the, here's what this is. Mm-hmm. I like when people sort of discover it for themselves. And okay. um, people who have been with me since I started making music have a really, have a much more solid idea of what ELO is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I, I just, I really want it to sort of maintain its, uh, its ambiguity and therefore its integrity. Mm -hmm. And just to give people a little bit of context on what we're talking about, if you aren't familiar, ELO is kind of casts, I don't want to, I don't want to put any labels on it, but I have to use labels to somewhat describe it. Yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, Yeah. Label, like record label, creative house, whatever, anything. It's like what it's a, his, his YouTube channel isn't cast. It's ELO. His merch isn't cast. It's ELO. It's, it's on the website. It re- is referenced as a record label, but it also appears to be so much more than that. So there's, a, it's coming in a lot of facets. But I feel like there's probably going to be so much more to it than that, just because of how many Easter eggs cast and how many levels everything has. So it feels like Elo is not going to be any one thing. But it, it, it only, I guess, maybe even Cast doesn't even fully know what he's going to create because uh, he hasn't created it yet. I guess is how I would interpret you thinking of it perfect okay i love that answer (laughs) and just one more last quote before we move on to our last question uh probably one of my favorite lines from any of your songs i just i didn't fit into any of my questions or any of my notes for the questions for you but i just wanted to point it out and just uh because this is like one of the things i found like makes me stick with you is i find you so relatable and i don't know i feel like i just see a lot of the personality that i I am come out through your music and it just feels like like one of the reasons I listen to Oliver Tree it's like it's super turn up music and it's super hype but also like yeah. if you pay attention for four seconds you realize this dude's in pain and this dude is suffering right. and he's like he's got the artist curse 
So this quote is, one for the kick, two for the snare. All the other kids want to sit and stare, but I'm scared. They're going to make fun of the stuff I wear. It's so unfair. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. I wear a lot of wacky shit, and uh, <laughs> it's everywhere. It's there. It's I got like I love it, man. 70 hats. I love a wardrobe. It's, uh, that line was one that just stuck to me so much, and that's from Wu, and that's from the past. That's from the first verse of Wu, which is cast as past tense. Which takes me back to like when I was just becoming an art, my full like artist self, and I was just wearing wacky shit. I would just like take my mom's like giant hats, wear them to school with no fashion. Just I would just wear stuff, and I would get ridiculed to shit about it. And eventually, I figured it out, and I learned how to make fashion good. And I I just like the it's it just related to me really a lot, and I just wanted to yeah, it, thank you. Emphasize that it, to you. It, it takes place in my past. I I'm still made fun of. For what I wear, it's oh, not. Don't get me wrong, it, I get it. It's all sort the of time. Comfortable. <laughs> but yeah, that takes me back to elementary, middle school. You know, wearing uh, whatever, like, and it just made, being made fun of it. Same thing with kids touching my hair because you know it looks or feels a certain way. That's that's all part of uh, my past. You oh know? yeah, hundred percent. I used to have <laughs> I used to have like hair down to like past my shoulders that was like tight little ringlet curls. So it was like throughout yeah. school, it was like the entire same thing. It was like. Why are you wearing that? Can I touch your hair? And I was just like, ah, gosh. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was really funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're moving on to our fifth and final question of the five W's, and that is our why. And I have a list. I I I did. Uh, I looked through about everything I possibly could, and uh, <laughs> Thank I you. just saw I saw a few trends come up uh, consistently throughout your work, whether it be your music videos, whether it be your lyrics, whether it be your photos or anything you do, or at least any way you do it. I just want to know, why do you reference the night time so consistently? It, I mean, to quote some songs, I mean, I'll turn nocturnal because fuck all you from fast forward on my sleeve. So please don't leave me in the dark from don't leave me in the dark. I'll be coming up with this shit in my sleep from oops. Because the stars are in the sky are meant to die from dry paint. Maybe someday we'll wake and this will all be a dream from Cherami. You and I are stuck in a lullaby from Cherami. I tried to sleep, but the hun hunger won't let me. I tried to sleep, but the hunger won't let me. Jumped out of my bed like it was smelly from smelly. And then just the song Sleep in itself. So what does the nighttime mean to you? And why is it such a consistent theme throughout your work? That's a, that's a great question. Uh... I think uh, a lot of a lot of my the inspiration for a lot of my ideas are they come from dreams. Mm -hmm. Things being very uh, very dreamlike. I keep a dream journal. The ideas for so many melodies and like visuals come to me in my sleep, or they're inspired by something that's almost dreamlike. Something mm -hmm. like Moon, where people are waking up to the idea of one another. Sleep feels like it, it's just a bunch of people in onesies, you know. Mm -hmm. if, if, and at the end of the day, it's it's whatever you want to sort of make from it in the same way that a dream can be interpreted in so many ways. That's how I want my work to be. I'm very much inspired uh, by the nighttime and night owl. Mm -hmm. Although lately I, I, I've been trying to like wake up earlier and work. But overall, it, it's it's just really. Uh, yeah, the night is where so many things happen. man. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, because even in Ball, you referenced to be up a late night ball and, quote, crying in yeah. the club. But, like, just to jump back to the journals, because I thought that was such an interesting part, uh, yeah. you, that you've been keeping journals for the past, like, eight or nine years super consistently. I just thought that was, like, super interesting to hear that it's just been, like, it's been something you've been about and it's been, like, there's such a long process leading up to where we are at now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, it's important for me to write down my thoughts forget that i wrote them down then later on reflect on them and i'll find something like oh shit this is mm -hmm. you know you just end up with like a collection of stories that you end up yeah to weave together yeah and then they'll eventually like the the greatest test of the uh the quality of an idea is time mm -hmm. and if i come up with something and in a year it's whack it's like okay so it wasn't that good of an idea but if I come up with something and in a year it's still good and then I wait for a few months more and it's still like a good idea, it's like, okay, this is a very strong 
thing that I can do. Yeah, because before something was. that's got to sound wrote, good, it's got to sound like shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's got to sound like shit initially, you know. Um, yeah, but that's what Moon was. When I when I conceptualized, oh shit, uh, two people waking up to the idea of one another, and then at the end, they wake up together. Almost like Inception, but mm-hmm. like not really, because it's a love story. And then at the end, the actual um, the big reveal is that it was all like one just big dream. That uh, that it was very, and uh, I thought it was a great idea. But I, I let it sit for a bit before I was like, okay, um, this belongs with this song. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be a yeah, yeah, because because everything that you do is based off a true story, if I'm correct. In some way, there's some yeah. nugget that yeah. it gets drawn out. So I know, it's really interesting to see all these abstract characters and the universe get and just like try for like trying like pull the threads back to where everything intertwines around the character slash person that is Josh slash cast uh, yeah. is really, is uh, it's been, it's been a great time trying to pull all those th- threads together. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, well, I'm that glad. has been our fifth and final question. I'm just going to run through my notes real quick. Cause I, there's, there was so much, like I said last time, this could have been the 25 W show. And there's just a few last things I want to tie up that it didn't quite fit into this. Uh, no worries, dude. It's like, uh, there's one thing that I thought was super interesting. And uh, yes, this quote from you where it says, it's really difficult for me because I always wanted to tell stories. I've always wanted to be intimate and convey what's going on in my heart. Recently, I found that my struggle in doing this, is it's been difficult to expand my following with just that interest me. It can't be intimate unless it's not, you know? I just thought yeah. that was such a great quote that after it was like one of the last things I found and added to like my list of notes. And I was just like, it just felt like it's such a great way to tie everything together. And I just kind of wanted to end with that quote, just encompassing your kind of methodology for how you do what you do and why it's so great. Yeah. It's, it's all about duality to me because if, if you just have a bunch of noise, you have nothing. You have to have silence in order to have noise. Mm-hmm. You have to have, you know, intimacy in order to have not intimacy, yeah. etc. So that's also the reason why I can do switch ups because take it back to the example for ball. When you have, if you would ju- if I were to just start off the song with what the switch up is with with the main song rather than do the intro, uh, it'd be good, but it wouldn't it wouldn't hit you in the face in mm-hmm. the way that. I intended it to do and an intro that is much higher energy is uh is necessary for for that part of the song because mm-hmm. uh, it sort it sort of carries it it sets the you need context you always need context before you can bring someone into a, a place that you yeah. want them to go that, that makes a lot of sense like just like it, it feels like whenever listening to stuff it doesn't feel like listening to music it feels like you're watching a play that that you just can't see. That's like the way I describe it from my ba- act background in acting and directing. That's like the best way I can describe it. It's like a completely full, enticing experience that's got so many levels and characters. It's it's a complete yeah, play. Is- it's it's amazing. Uh, if anyone Thank hasn't you. checked it out yet, you have to. I will. I'll link everything down below. I'll link uh, Elo, the page where you can find all his merch when it, he eventually does restock it. It happens occasionally, but it sells out instantly. Uh, I'll link his YouTube channel. Where you can see all the music videos that we've been discussing. Uh, they, they're absolutely amazing. They're definitely worth your time. He just shoots them with his buddies. He shoots them with their friends, and they're just super authentic. I'll link to his Instagram where you can follow him and see all his stuff. Uh, he has Twitter. He has Tumblr, but uh, he's got everything. It'll all be down below. But um, thank you so much, Cast, for joining us. Cast is a vocalist, a poet, a producer, a musical genius, a goofball, a visionary, and the greatest thing you have now heard of. My name is Vinrisi Setter. Cast, do you have anything else to say before I end this press? Thank you. I know that these are some wild times, but uh, we're all here. Uh, thank you for coming for coming through and doing this. I appreciate it. No problem. I appreciate you coming back for round two, the first round two of the five W's. Uh, that has been our show. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, Remember to stick along, like, comment, subscribe if you want more of this content. Uh, 
Have a great day. Thank you.